My last video looked at American English, specifically the fact that most Americans don't have a contrast between two vowels represented by these symbols. They have one phoneme that, like many other sounds, may vary a bit depending on stress. Today I'm sticking with the same vowels, or vowel, but looking at the entire world. I don't claim to be an expert on every accent of English, so I want to celebrate the 40th birthday of the famous three-volume Accents of English by my great teacher John Wells, and use it as our guide. Let's see if we can go round the world in eight minutes, beginning now. John's starting point is the southeast of England, including London, the home counties, and East Anglia. It's the region that gave birth to received pronunciation. Speakers in the southeast confidently feel a difference between two phonemes, a uh, as in strut, and schwa, uh, as on the end of comma, so above. Southerners agree, for example, that the middle vowel of cucumber is strut, but the middle vowel of industry is comma. So let's see what happens when we leave the southeast. John's first stop is the west country of England. The question arises as to whether there is a phonemic opposition between the strut vowel and the weak uh of about, the possibility of stressed uh and unstressed uh being allophones of the same phoneme. Whether this analysis is the correct one is tricky to determine. I am inclined to think that for West Country local accents it usually is. This is confirmed by Hughes, Trutgill and Watt. In the Southwest generally, the strut vowel is uh, and it seems that unlike in RP, there are not two distinct phonemes uh and uh. This means no strut vowel distinct from comma, and the same phoneme in both syllables of above. So the very first stop on our world tour, and already we're in territory that characteristically lacks the RP type distinction. Next stop, the north of England. John uses north as a cover term for the north and the Midlands, with Midlands accents tending to mix aspects of the south and the north. Now in RP, the Middle English short U has split into two phonemes, the current U and A. This split, dating from the 17th century, has not taken place in the broad accents of the north of England, so there's no strut vowel distinct from foot, which gives above. You must has the same vowel as German du must. John also describes a second northern variety, my native accent, which does the same thing as the West Country. Stressed a uh in strut seems to be particularly characteristic of northern near RP, with pronunciations such as cup, brother. So again, no strut vowel distinct from schwa, above. And this pattern is found yet again on John's next stop, Wales. Strut does not contrast with the uh of unstressed syllables, so that a large untidy room and a large and tidy room tend to be homophonous. Well, to be honest, I'm not sure about those really sounding the same, but either way, schwa is stressable exactly as it is in the Welsh name of the country, Cymru. There's no strut vowel, and above has the same phoneme in both syllables. Now up to Scotland, where surely things will be different. Actually, not so much. Yet again, John describes strut and comma as one and the same phoneme, though the Scottish convention is to treat them both as turned V. This comma vowel may be analysed as a, uh, and this agrees with speaker's intuition. So there's no comma distinct from strut. By the way, John points out that some words in his comma set have the kit vowel in Scotland. He gives the example pilot. Finally, we cross some water, and finally we reach somewhere other than the southeast of England that actually has a strut comma contrast. Mostly. The strut foot split has not taken place in the broad accents of the north of England, and only partly so in Ireland. There is a complication with a, uh, namely the question of the extent to which the opposition between it and u uh is maintained. If the opposition isn't maintained, of course, then we have, as in north of England 1, no strut distinct from foot, giving above. Hughes, Trudgill and Watt confirm this. There is a strong tendency for u uh and a uh not to be distinct in strongly local Dublin accents, for example u uh in government, but it seems that most of Ireland has the distinction. Now it's time to cross the Atlantic, and if you saw my last video, you know what's coming. In general American, it may well be considered that stressed a uh and unstressed a uh are co-allophones of one phoneme. Since gen am usually lacks a proper opposition between a uh and a, uh, it follows that the phoneme may equally well be written a uh, schwa. Yet again, no strut distinct from comma, and on a massive scale. And as I mentioned before in Scotland, many Americans use kit in a lot of John's comma words, for example, stomach. 
Heading south from General American, in the southern USA several different qualities may be encountered for the A uh of strut. A mid-central quality is perhaps the most typically southern. So what is this backwards epsilon? Each volume of Accents of English contains the 1979 IPA chart, where this symbol is just a variety of schwa. So again, above. We carry on south to the Caribbean. In West Indian vowels, the most striking characteristic is the tendency to avoid central a-like qualities in favour of peripheral, unreduced vowels. This means no weak comma at all in characteristic West Indian accents. And John gives examples like happiness, woman, ago, purpose. And if we travel back across the Atlantic to Nigeria, we find not only no comma, but no strut either. To give just one example, the English pronunciation used by speakers of Yoruba in Nigeria typically involves only the seven vowels of Yoruba, none of which is schwa or turned V. So we get forms like above. Maintaining an easterly course, we come to India. Get ready for deja vu. The status of the opposition a uh versus a uh is dubious or variable. The phonemic status of strut is not clear, and it may be an allophone of schwa. Well, this would hardly be surprising, since Hindi, just like Welsh, already has a stressable schwa vowel, as in kamarband. Yet again, no distinct strut vowel above. John's brief discussion of Singapore mentions its RP-type model, but more recent descriptions of Singapore English describe its strut as merged with palm and its comma as merged with stressable nurse. In the Philippines, as in the US, stressed strut is schwa, though in unstressed syllables in conversational style, schwa is avoided, so above is above or above. In Hawaiian Creole, the opposition of lot and strut may be missing, and we find the use of peripheral vowels in what in standard accents are unstressed syllables. This would mean no distinct strut or comma. Finally, down to the Southern Hemisphere. And at last, for the first time in our world trip, we have in Australia a country that, without reservations, has the same strut comma distinction as RP. Australian English has a phoneme a uh, restricted in occurrence to weak syllables. It contrasts with all other vowels. Of course, this is because Australian English has so much in common with the southeast of England. For example, the fronting of the a uh of strut towards the Cardinal Four area, a, uh, is also found in London Cockney. And so we have above. Cucumber. Industry. But moving on to New Zealand, although there most definitely is a strut vowel, things are fundamentally different. New Zealanders studying phonetics usually find it unrealistic to attempt to distinguish the phonemic symbols i and u. Accordingly, it seems sensible to symbolise the New Zealand kit vowel as u, schwa, as this thing. So there's no weak comma vowel. Schwa is stressable. We may have above but we also have dinner. And things are similar on our very final stop, South Africa. Historical i, the kit vowel, has undergone a phonemic split into i and u, uh, the latter having become one of the stressable vowels in South African English. In other words, yet another accent with no weak comma vowel. Above, but dinner. Eight minutes, just. So it's time to sum up. Does English have a distinction between a strong strut phoneme and a weak comma phoneme? Yes or no? Well, the southeast of England does, and this was exported to Australia. But according to John Wells's Accents of English, the only other territory that is clearly characterised by this distinction is Ireland, mostly. In the no column, we can start with the traditional strutless English vowel system that survives in the north of England. We also have my native accent, northern too plus West Country accents, and Wales, and Scotland, and to this we can add General American, and apparently Southern speech too. Then there's the West Indies, Hawaii, Nigeria, South Africa, New Zealand, Singapore, the Philippines, and it looks like Indian English too. Of course you can find RP-type speakers scattered all over the globe, but the strong strut weak comma contrast isn't characteristic of any of these territories. The lack of a strut comma contrast is found in these places. The identification of strut words with other vowels, such as kit, is found in these places. And the vowel used in comma is stressable in these places. 
So the foot strut split turns out to be a minority phenomenon. This was where a large number of words in the traditional foot set broke away to create a new extra vowel phoneme, distinct from both foot and comma, something that entrenched itself in the southeast of England and hardly anywhere else. The majority of English speakers have accents with strut centering. This is simply the defection of the strut words from foot to comma. Just like bath broadening is the defection of bath words from trap to palm. One possibility that I don't think Accents of English mentions at all is the foot vowel centralising to the point that it merges with schwa. This can be found on both sides of the Atlantic and it includes some SSB speakers. For example, there are speakers who pronounce banana with the vowel of book in the first syllable and the vowel of nut in the final syllable. Banana. This of course means, yet again, the loss of a weak comma phoneme. And that means that even in the south of England, the strong strut weak comma system may be a bit less established than people think. In my next video, I'm going to discuss just why this is. Why the foot strut split was so unsuccessful. Why most English varieties don't want the extra vowel it creates and what implications all of this may have for pronunciation teaching. Until then, please like and subscribe and of course, take care.